Thank you so much, Loretta. Give her a hand for playing He Touched Me. Love that song. So Anyway, good morning, everybody. It's good to have you here with us today. And as we come together and worship our Lord and Savior, as you know, we're honored to have the guys from Transformation Living Center here with us today. They're going to bring a little bit of word, share a little bit of their testimonies today as they uh, enjoy worship with us. We were blessed to have them back in Sunday school with us this morning, but uh, please keep in mind, and they didn't ask for this, this is me doing this 100%, uh, we are going to try to shower them with a love offering at the end of the service, we'll have uh, one of our offering plates at the back of the church, we'll take our normal tithes and offerings, but outside of that, uh, please consider giving to this ministry, because they do a fantastic job with these men, and uh, I know they work off a lot of donations, and sometimes the money doesn't flow in like I, they need it to, so please prayerfully consider that to give over and above what you do with your tithes and offerings, and we'll collect that at the end of the service and get it to them. You can make the check out directly to Transformation if you want to, or if you prefer, make it out to the church and just put TLC in the memo, and that way it'll show up on your church statement, and we'll, uh, we'll get it to them from there, so please consider that. So. Uh, if you would, open up your bulletins, and we'll go over a few announcements today. I notice it still shows the Sweetheart Banquet. I assume we're not doing that again, but it sounded like the last week it was a great success. So thank you to everyone who happened to be there for that. So, And if you see Cinnamon, tell her job well done from what everything I've heard about it. Unfortunately, Melissa and I had to miss it because we was over doing some family stuff, but uh, I'm glad it was a success. But. Uh, after church, we will have cookies and fellowship outside in the, fel in the foyer there. Wednesday night will be youth. Uh, I believe they're doing a little bit of a project this week. I think they're uh, going out to uh, do a little bit of a mission project uh, this week. It, so uh, be in prayer for the youth as they do that. Uh, adult choir practice at 530. If you are a singer or if you can lift a joyful noise, they would love to have you be part of that. I believe they're meeting in the, the choir room, which is directly across the hall here. Uh, so please be part of that. Adult Bible study, 6 o'clock in the parlor. And then uh, movie night, 7 o'clock in the fellowship hall. So a lot going on Wednesday night. Next Sunday, we got a special guest. And we would love for as many of you to be here as possibly can. Uh, Daniel Pacini, who is a, a potential uh, pastor candidate for us is going to be here next week, him and his wife and his daughter. Uh, we're going to welcome them in on the weekend, and they're going to come tour the city, uh, see what we got going on around here, and then they're going to come to church, and Daniel's going to bring the word next week. So if you can all work it in your schedules, please plan to be here and welcome them in, hear what Daniel has going on, and we would love for you to, uh, to get to know Daniel a little bit. We're going to have potluck next week, so he'll stick around and uh, be there for a time of fellowship and potluck just so everybody gets a chance to talk to him. So uh, we would love for you to be part of that and just uh, uh, just welcome them here to Fairview. Have, what's that? And we will have communion next week as well, so please plan for that. So lost my, there went. Okay. Uh, please plan to be part of that. Please, let's, let's put on a spread for them too. Let's make it a big potluck. So uh, just bring your favorite sides and whatever. We'll have chicken like we always do, but then whatever else you want on top of that, please bring that. So uh, looking ahead to anything else, planning ahead several weeks. We will have a Monday Thursday service like we normally do. Uh, I think there's some, maybe some things going on in the background already to make a plan for that, but we'll just plan on us having a, a Monday Thursday. And, of course, we'll have our normal Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday events at the end of March. So uh, any other announcements? Melissa. This Tuesday. Tuesday night, not in the bulletin, but we are having leadership team this Tuesday, 6 o'clock. Open meeting to anybody who wants to be part of that. It's where we do discuss the business of the church, so we would love to have you come be a part of the meeting, hear what's going on with the finances of the church, everything like that. Uh, it's all open record, so please come to that and be part of that. Joe. Um, we're also still looking for uh, folks who are interested in helping with uh, uh, counting money and then also serving as head usher. Um, on the head usher, I always like to say it's not that hard. All you have to do is hand out the, the bulletins in the morning, um, count the attendance, and then make sure you have 
three other people to help with uh, together in offering. That's really it. So if you could think about that, I would appreciate it. Thank you very much. And it does not have to be a man. I know typically it's a male back there. It does not have to be male exclusive. That's open to anybody. So any others this morning? Max? I'd, I'd like to just get you up to speed on the process of redoing the, the sanctuary and uh, the, the whole church. I, I believe that we'll more than likely be wrapping up most of this this week. I, uh, our construction company have their part. We have our part, so I look forward to to putting a kind of a finishing touch on this, hopefully this week. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to share is uh, that trailer sitting out front is full of stuff from the library, and uh, we really need to get some of that back in there. <laughs> I'm confident that half of it could probably go away, and, and that's the reason it's sitting out there, because uh, I don't want to really bring it all back in here without it being uh, looked over. And uh, Arlene Benson and Glennis and Cinnamon are uh, are wanting to be a, a part of that, but they need help. And so please reach out to them. Yes. The bookshelves on the east side and on the north side and the cupboards underneath are all clean, dusted, and ready to be filled with books. And just an FYI, if it's left up to me, that trailer won't be there next week, and anything that's probably still in it is going to be in the dumpster. Uh, that's just how I operate, so <laughs> enjoy that. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in it, and Arlene and Bill and the guys from Phoenix Construction did a fantastic job of cataloging what's in, in there. So it, we just need somebody with a heart for books and library to... Uh, we don't want to have empty shelves in there, but at the same time, I mean, there's probably 200 VHS tapes, and everybody knows VHS is no longer in existence. So a lot of stuff that can disappear, but uh, just uh, something that Cinnamon did a fantastic job this week of getting the workroom organized again with some boxes that were in there. So anyway, it's not a, many hands make light work, so just somebody just needs to jump on it. Beautiful weather to do it before it gets to be the blessed 102 plus 70 degree humidity here in a few weeks. So anyway, any other announcements this morning? Seeing none, let's go to Lord in prayer and let's open up and worship. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come before you today, Lord and Father God, we praise you for a beautiful day, the, the beautiful season that you're sliding us into, God, the, the Lenten season that we're currently in, Lord, that you're, you're asking us to draw nearer to you. Father God, because you're always there. We're the ones that stray away and, and look elsewhere, Lord, and help us to return our focus to you today and throughout this Lenten season to, to truly honor you for your glory, for your blessings, for just who you are, God, not necessarily for what you give us or what you do for us, Lord, but for you, who you are. Help us to keep that in focus. And Father God, just worship you the way that you deserve, God. Father, I pray for the, the gentlemen that will come before us this morning, Lord, that you, you calm their nerves as they're maybe not used to sharing a little bit of their lives, Lord, uh, that you just bless them as they bless us with their testimonies, Lord. And we pray for those who come before you in leading us in music and singing of songs, Lord, you bless them as they bless us with their gifts. And Father God, we lift up all this to you. In your son Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let us enter into worship. Your love 
Well, as we said, it's our honor today to have the TLC guys join us today. So uh, they're going to kind of give us a, a little bit about what they do out there, I assume, and then uh, some of their guys will share a little bit. So you guys are welcome to come forward. And this is Randy Parker here, who's kind of leading the show on this part of it. So good to have you. During the height of the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln was meeting with his, his cabinet, and, and this was a terrible, terrible time because the war just was this endless, and it was just going on and on, and thousands and thousands of men were dying. And so Abraham Lincoln looked at his cabinet, and he said, you know, I remember a, a fellow back home that was a farmer. He had these two boys, and boy, they were ornery. They were just the orneriest boys, always into something, always getting in trouble. He said one day he went to town, and he told those boys, he said, now, I want to make sure that, that you don't get into trouble and, and you need to make sure you get your chores done. Whatever you do, stay with the pig pen. That old sow out there is that pig and she's mean, so stay away. Well, after he had left in the wagon, it wasn't long before those two boys were over there by that pig pen. And they turned that big old sow loose and she got to chasing one of them. And that big old sow was right on the heels of one of those boys just nipping at his backside. And so he runs to a tree and he starts running around this tree. And, and all they could do was reach out and grab a hold of that pig's tail. And around and around and around they ran. And he couldn't let go of it, but he couldn't, knew he couldn't keep hanging on to it. So he yells out, help me. Somebody help me. Let go of this pig. Abraham Lincoln looked at his cabinet and said, I wish somebody would help me let go of this war. See, that's what we do at TLC is, is, is sometimes problems in life, issues in life, trials in life can lead to addiction or for whatever reason people get a hold of something and something gets a hold of them and it's big and it's mean and they, they want to let go. That's what we do. We help people let go and we do that through a faith-based program. See, we teach the principles of the Bible. Whether it's about attitude, whether it's about anger, whether it's about temptation, no matter what the issue may be with a relationship, we know that, that the alcoholism or the addiction uh, to drugs is just a part of it. And then everything else is compounded with it. So we want these guys to let go. And we do that through Jesus Christ. Our principle, and, and we have several different teachers out there who teach different uh, subjects, it's about Jesus Christ. It's about the principles of the Bible. It's not about a religion. We're not associated with a specific religion. We teach the principles of the Bible because going to church is a choice, just like accepting Jesus is a church. So we, we need to make sure that when these guys come in, and they come in from everywhere, that, you know, some of them have stood before a judge and said, go to treatment or go to prison. That's a pretty good incentive there. So we get those guys. We get guys who, whose family said, We're, we, we've had enough. We're done. Go get treatment. Or sometimes guys just walk in and say, I need help. No matter where they are, whether they're, 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 they're uh, a Christian or not a Christian, we don't care. That's up to them. We are going to teach the principles of the Bible. They, they will accept the spirituality of Jesus Christ along with the other teachings that we teach. It's up to them. We don't force religion on anybody. But we're hoping <laughs> that they will accept Jesus, leave, go out, attend the church, become you know, a good tax-paying citizen instead of taking it. So that's what we do out at TLC. Uh, it's a year-long program. They, they, uh, many of the guys that come in, uh, are, are at different levels uh, of, uh, uh, of their uh, sobriety. But we, we just take these men, and it's, it's, it, it's a group program, but at the same time, it's an individual program for each person. So uh, it is a year-long program. After the year, then we expect them to, to call and check in after a month. Many of them 
do longer than that. So anyway, that's what we do. That's the, the kind of the, the Reader's Digest version. But we're here to help people let go, and we do that through the Bible. I'm going to let Mr. Bartell come up and kind of explain the, what, what the rest Uh, I think probably everybody knows me here. I've got some of my neighbors back there. Uh, anyway, Jay Bartell, and uh, I'm the, quote, administrative director at TLC, which means I write the letters to the court, basically. Uh, Mark, Mark, raise your hand. You guys probably all know Mark. He is our facility director. He's there 24-7, basically, and Paul Powell, Raise your hand, Paul. He's our work group coordinator. He takes the guys out and works half days, and he's there a lot of the time at the facility. His daughter, Amber. Raise your hand, Amber. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Anyway, uh, those two guys are the ones that they carry the load. They carry the load out there uh, on, a, on a daily basis uh, with the guys in there. They're there to talk. They're there to work them through uh, things. Randy talked a little bit about addiction, and what you find is that who's been touched by addiction, who's had addiction, been there. Uh, you don't always get in trouble in addiction. Some, sometimes you just have it, and you just don't. You, you need a little shove, a little shove to deal with to deal with life's issues. So uh, there's all kinds of addiction. Obviously, drugs, alcohol, pornography, uh, those are the things that usually get us into the trouble. But there's a lot of other things that get us in trouble, like we talked in Sunday school. Anything that, anything that draws us away from God um, is an issue. So those are the things we want to get to the root of. Uh, I'll give you a couple of facts. TLC was founded in 2011. Trent Watkins... Betty Cleaver, used to be uh, Betty McDaniel, Terry Ratzliff, and Dax Eubanks were the four founding members. Their names on the, the founding document. Now, none of those guys, well, Terry's still on our board. So, but the rest of those people are moved on to different places. So, our board currently is myself, uh, Vince Query. Terry Ratzliff, and Derek Cox, pastor of the Baptist Church. Um, Randy mentioned briefly that, or actually, I think Ron mentioned it, our, our funding is about 65, 60 or 65% donations, and about 35 or 40% comes from us going out and working jobs, doing, cutting trees, mowing, uh, whatever, and you, you you see us out in the community, so so that kind of gives you an idea of our of our funding. And I always I remind these guys pretty often that someone out there, some little old lady or someone, is helping pay your way here. So so let's make good on let's make good on what they're on their faith donation that they're giving. Uh, I'll just ask some questions here. I may go off script here, guys. Oh, you've got some answers written down. It's good. Uh, anybody want to talk about how they how they got to TLC or how they how they found out about it? Well, I, well, this is my second time here, and the first time I found out in jail in 2019 that that there was this place called TLC, and I wrote them and and came here, and I dramatically failed after a year so I'm back trying to uh, get this thing right with my life and walk the walk with Jesus Christ um, I came here on my own through the graces of, of TLC uh, just to try to do better to get off uh, the drugs and alcohol so um, I was uh Pretty strong in my addiction. I was in Missouri. Um, I was 
meth addict for probably 20 plus years. Um, I went to go fill up my RV and doing bad things, you know, and uh, I ran out of gas on the side of the road. Didn't have no license, no insurance tag on that RV. And uh, come to find out, a warrant popped up in Oklahoma to set me down a little bit. And uh, I got back to Oklahoma and they were trying to revoke me on a five year suspended sentence for not paying. So I prayed about it, you know, find the Bible when I was in there and um, try to do the good thing. So uh, somebody told me about PLC and um, I called, I read a uh, application and um, a couple of weeks went by, a month or so, and I was looking at the phone and uh, it was called my lawyer. So her name was above the phone in the cell. So I went and called her, and she said, I got you. I've been working hard to get you in the PLC, and um, you're going. So a couple of weeks later, Mark and Paul come and swoop me up, and that's where I've been ever since. And I was on a path that was leading me to destruction, and I uh, Came in here, found out I got a pretty bad condition. So if I was going down that road, I'd probably been up dead. So that's where I'm at now. Okay, I'm just looking here. I think that kind of hit also also on what brought you to TLC. Uh, anybody want to talk about the ed issues that you feel like have been addressed for you while you've been at TLC? Uh, I came to TLC out of a, a hospital, and I've learned to uh, that not everybody's against you, and some people actually want to help you. And I've sure uh, learned to trust people a lot more. I've gained a lot of hope through getting back to church and realizing that somebody was there watching me, and I'm here for a reason. Anybody else? Anybody else? I've, I've learned that getting along with people is not as hard as I thought it would be, um, especially a group of men like this. I love all my brothers. I just, they've, they've changed the direction that I was going so far. I've only been here three months, but I didn't look at life like I did. I gave up on life about seven years ago. I was homeless for seven years living in a tent in Roanoke, Virginia, and I got married, and I, I'd really rather not go into all the specifics about that because it's I'm still in the process of trying to move things on from there. But um, I've I've only ha I've I've experienced only good things here. I appreciate everything they've done for me. I appreciate them just accepting me into this program because I will say this: had they not, I would be in the penitentiary right now. So. Thank you for hoping. So, uh, how has your perspective changed on life since you've been at TLC? Well, I, I've learned to define myself as a man of God instead of just a, an addict or an alcoholic. Um, I've had a lot of failures in life, but I know that they don't define me. Um, I'm a son. I'm a father. I'm a grandfather now. Um, listening to the Holy Spirit and following the Holy Spirit's guidance is helping me to be a better person. It's helping me to become a positive role model in my grandchildren's lives and my, my kids' lives. I missed out on a lot of my, my children's lives due to my past mistakes. Uh, I've been to prison five times, and, you know, it's not a path that I want to want to go down anymore it's not for me um, I'm gonna move probably to Fairview whenever I get out and start a new life here my family is on board with that and they support it 100% uh, the hospitality and 
um, camaraderie that I receive at TLC is a huge blessing, and I, I appreciate it very much. So. I don't think this question is on here, but I was talking to somebody the other day. Uh, is it easy to live in a house with six, seven other guys? How's, what's that like? Is it, it's it can be challenging at times, for sure, um, especially living in a house with six or seven other guys that all have a problem like you. Um, it might not be the same problem, but it's going to be a problem that keeps you away from the Lord. Um, so at any given time, we're going to have one or two fellows that, that don't want to be there that are in a negative attitude. But we've learned to, um, through the power of Jesus, I don't know if it would have been able to have been done, but we all learn to support each other um, and to lift each other up when we're when we're down and and uh, the devil's getting in our ear. Um, I think it it teaches a lot of humility, um, a lot of patience. Um, everyone works different, everyone's paths are different, but uh, TLC is a place where you can get away from all the outside distractions of the world and. Uh, and focus on what's important. And whenever you have a body um, of men together doing all the same thing, we're going to help each other um, reach the goal that, that we want, and that's to uh, live a good um, life under Jesus Christ and, and, sh and bear the fruit that this whole process has, has, uh, has given us the opportunity to grow. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this is another question. It's not on here, but... Do, does the staff always have the right answer to everything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we know that's not right. We don't. We 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 don't always get it right every time. No, you know, but you, you guys you guys do recognize whenever whenever things aren't wrong and 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 you admit it and and you know that's an example to us to uh, to have humility and and to. Um, to recognize when things aren't aren't aren't, aren't right, and and you make changes, and in, in that, you know, that passes down. So, uh, how has the uh, has your time at TLC affected your relationships with your family, friends, children? <coughs> well, since being at TLC, uh, my mom is. Uh, grasp me a little bit closer uh, she's forgiven me for some of the things that I've done that no should no son should do you know uh, stealing um, you know she's forgiven me for a lot of things in the past and I've forgiven her too and um, it's getting stronger so. good anybody else on that one um, before I came in here I um, I was pretty hopeless. Um, I went from prison right back into alcohol and drug use pretty heavy. Uh, I was living in Cherokee, outside of Cherokee. Um, um, my daughters were a part of my life, but from a distance. Uh, I had had one grandchild at that point in time, and I wasn't getting to meet her because of I went back into the same things. It was kind of a stipulation. Of, her mom had put on me that if you want to meet your granddaughter, then you're going to have to walk, you know, walk the walk. And I wasn't doing it, and I wasn't getting to meet her. Um, at that point in time, both of my daughters were pregnant, and I was getting ready to have two grandsons. Well, the Lord intervened. I had, I got hit by a vehicle and had a wreck. Pretty much God slapped me saying, hey, it's time to wake up, got into TLC, and since then, I'm going to get to meet my grandchildren, my daughters were in contact, and uh, my parents, they come and visit me, they they see a positive change in me, and it feels a lot better to be at this point in my life than it was where I was, it was pretty low, so I just thank my blessings and thank God for that opportunity. Is your time here at TLC what you kind of expected when you first heard about it, or uh, is it different than what you were expecting? Different? 
It wasn't initially what I thought it would be, but it's a good program. It's where I need to be, and um, I'm glad I found it. And, uh, I'm changing for the best and put God first in my life and head of the household, and uh, that's where I'm going to stick. That's not that's not what I thought it would be, neither. That um, it, I mean, it, it's tough at times, for sure, yeah. Um, but, you know, I figured it would be more of um, dictation of how things would go, um, more, more, you know, more what they do is, is give you all the tools and the environment that you need to, to get a relationship with God, and it's it's more of an opportunity between God and you that they give you rather than a regiment. Of course, everything is, is set on a schedule and, and regimented to a degree, but uh, there's, a little, there's more freedom than, than I figured there would be. I don't know if you heard Matt when asked that question. He said, it's tough. <laughs> and it is. It's not a – it's no cakewalk. I, I think a lot of it is – you walk, you walk through the doors, and you do what we ask for 12 months. You've learned a huge amount of patience and discipline just by the very fact that you stuck it out, you know. And uh, I, I admire that from you guys. I haven't done it. I haven't done it, so I, I have no idea what it is. But uh, Anything else any of you guys want to say that didn't hit on one of these questions? question about how has TLC affected relationships with your family uh, I, it had got to where my family didn't want me around and said that you know you show up intoxicated enough and you have enough fights and you burn enough bridges you know family kind of has to cut themselves so cut you off just due to self preservation not because they don't love you or anything but it's because you have kind of dug a hole for yourself. But since I've got to TLC, I don't think my family has missed coming to see me on visitation ever since. And I've been there about eight and a half months. So it's really, they've, they've uh, it's about mended the relation. Well, not them, it's really God has, has mended the relationship with my family. And we've really reconciled. Not saying that I don't still get on their nerves, but but I, uh, it's it's a lot healthier than it was, and I'm very thankful for that. I thank TLC, and I thank God for it. Rob wants to talk. Uh, Jesus didn't come for the healthy; he came for the sick. I just everybody to remember that. Everybody knows somebody that's got a problem, and there's good places out there like TLC. All right, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Randy, you're up. Yeah, I went over. The message this morning is a message of hope. It's a message of hope that no matter what these guys are going through, no matter what trial they went through, addiction that got a hold of them or they got a hold of it, there's always hope that they can have a better life and they can let that go. And that's what we're out here for. That's what you're out here for because we know that you're in a spiritual battle. You're in a spiritual battle every day. And that battle has been going on for years and years. And uh, matter of fact, that battle was, 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 was in, in such a turmoil that Jesus Christ himself stepped off that throne, came down and said, let me show you how to fight. And so we fight that battle with him. And so... Uh, these guys come at, 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 at di different times of their lives and, and whether their spiritual walk with Jesus is. And uh, just to mention quickly a little bit, Jay talked about the money, the finances. Uh, many of these guys, we, we, we do charge a small amount to come in. Many of these guys can't afford it. Many of these guys just simply don't have the funds for it because they're at the end of the road. So, so. Jay allows them to come in. Jay and Mark allows them to come in and, and does that. And so one of the things we would like to say is that with your donations, we appreciate that. And I know I don't want to embarrass anybody, but uh, 
Mr. Maynard's uh, company is very generous. They are very, very generous, and they help us out tremendously. And that allows us to continue one more day. Because <laughs> sometimes it's just like one more day. So thank you for that. We appreciate the fact that you're going to take a love offering. If you'd like to make this part of your uh, uh, yearly donation, we'd certainly accept that. We accept gold doubloons and Rolex watches. Whatever you want to donate, we'll, we'll, we are welcome. We'll, we'll take that. So we thank you very much for allowing us to be a part of this. I hope we didn't run over too much. If we did, then, you know, talk to Mr. Bartell about that, you know? <laughs> thank you so much for letting us be here. I appreciate you. So, I mean, I think everybody knows how hard it is to get up here and kind of tell your dirty laundry. I mean, I, it's hard to do. Thank you guys for being willing and open uh, to share part of your lives with us, and we appreciate it very much. And, and you're an example. I know you say it's not a religious organization necessarily, but they are what a church is. That they, When they talk about supporting one another, when things aren't going right. It's easy for us to do it when everybody's like-minded, when everybody uh, thinks they're doing all the right things, but when somebody starts getting out of line and you're still supporting one another, that's what the church is called to be, and you guys are an example of that, so thank you so much. Now's the time in our service when we do uh, honor our Lord and Savior by the giving of our tithes and offerings. Again, if you, we're going to do a love offering later, but if you do want to drop something in the plate, just make sure you note it as TLC on there, and we'll make sure it gets where it needs to go. But we will have a, a collection plate at the back of the sanctuary at the end of the service as well. So please bow with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, and we, we thank you for the many blessings that you give us in our lives, Lord. And now is our opportunity to be faithful back to you, and just giving a, a small amount of the of abundance of blessings you give us in our lives, Lord, and help us to give cheerfully and joyfully, Lord, and, and just watch as you, you multiply these funds to further your kingdom. And we lift this up to you in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Please rise for the comment on solitude. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You may be seated, and now's the time in our service where we do come together and share our joys and concerns. If you have a joy or concern you'd like to make known, please stand, and the ushers will bring you a mic. So, any joys or concerns this week? Paul. Uh, yes, you guys have been praying for my stepbrother, uh, Raylan Vanetta, out in New Mexico. Um, he was all but on death's door, and he is uh, recovering now, and he's doing a lot better than he was. So still got a long road, so I appreciate your prayers and future prayers and past prayers. I have one for our family. Um. <laughs> all over the it's like, hello. <laughs> um, on both sides of our family this week, on Wednesday and on Friday, um, uh, we have two little what we call our, our 
great nephews because they're um, two little boys born this week, and um, one's still in the NICU, but going to be okay, but we're just so grateful for new life. say thank y'all for having us. Um, thank you for supporting us, and we love y'all. And yeah. I just want to say I'm thankful for TLC and for God you know, helping me reconcile with my family and everything, too. I'm in the same boat with some of these guys that when I first came to TLC, my family wasn't talking to me. I haven't seen my kids in a few months, and now one of my daughters is living with me, and everything's going really good. say thank you to TLC. I've had them almost every year, and they do such a great job, and they're all very nice, too, and I really appreciate them. Thank you. And they didn't say it either. I mean, they, they do all kinds of handy jobs that you need them to do. I mean, they can cut down trees. They can build fence. They can do pretty much anything so if you got any odd jobs you want them to do and uh, they'll come out and give you a suggested price if you want that but uh, just uh, consider them because they, they can do it and I got personal experience with them many of you know my brother uh, spent 10 years in prison and when he came out of prison he went to the TLC program and uh, I'm one million convinced that he probably wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the program because they set him on a, a good path that allows him to deal with things differently than what he used to do. And so uh, that's my personal experience with them. Any others this morning? Esther. For somebody to tell the <laughs> sports thing, and um, understand the boys have won. They lost. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but... As a loyal OU fan, <laughs> I do say hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Any others this morning? Let's continue to be in prayer. As we said, we got a pastor prospect coming in next week. So be in prayer for uh, our pastoral committee and for Daniel and his family as they travel to come visit with us, just lift them up in prayer, and uh, that God's will will happen through the process, so, any others, any unspoken requests you'd like make known by a lift raising of a hand, all right, let's go to the Lord in prayer, <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, Lord, and we come before you humbled, Father, that you, the creator of our universe, that you would have time for us, Lord. Father, that you know every detail of our life, good and bad. You know it before we do it, Lord, and Father God, you love us all the same. You never love us any less. You can't love us anymore. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever, Lord, and we praise you for that, Lord, that you're, you're faithful to us when we're not faithful to you. Father, I pray for our ability to draw closer to you through this Lenten season. Father, to follow the example of what the TLC guys said, that when things aren't going necessarily right, Lord, that they, they still support one another. And Father, I pray that for our church body, not just this people in this church building, but it's for our universal church, Lord, that Maybe as the world tells us that we're judgmental and that they don't want to be part of us, Lord, that we, we show them your love. Father, that we, we are loved the way that you are loved to us, Lord, that they can see something different in us because it's you shining through us, Lord. And Father, I pray for our ability to do that. Father, I pray for the family members that were mentioned this morning that are still dealing with... Uh, physical ailments, Lord, that yes, they've, they've made improvements, and we praise you for that, Lord, but 
maybe they still got a long ways to go. We pray for our friends and uh, those who weren't mentioned that are heavy on our hearts, Lord, that whatever they're dealing with, you continue to lift them up. Father, we pray for each of these men in the TLC program where they're at and their steps, their faith walk, Lord, that you continue to draw them closer to you, that they can kick old habits and replace it with your love and your grace and your mercy that's never ending. Father, we praise you for that. Father, we praise you for new life, Lord, that uh, the blessings of new life that you've brought into our midst, Lord, that these families are blessed with these new family members with good health and, Father, just uh, your love for them. Father, we continue to pray for our church as we welcome uh, Daniel and his family in next week, Lord, that you just uh, help them to help us to show them a, a welcoming and loving uh, community. Father, that would want to make them be part of this. We thank you for the call that you've put on their life so far that's brought us together where we're at right now. And Lord, if it's your will that the, he's the right one, Father, that you just continue to open the doors and allow this to happen. Father, if there's somebody else out there for us, Lord, you help us to have your wisdom, your discernment, to see that, to know that you have the right pastor in place for us, Lord. And Father God, we praise you for everything you do for us each and every day. And Father, we lift all this up to you in your son Jesus' name, also using the prayer that your son Jesus Christ taught us by saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now let's rise one more time. Closing hymn, it's number 369. The words are also on the screen. Blessed Assurance.
receive the benediction. And I, I love that song three times. And there again, for thick-headed guys like Ron, it says perfect submission, perfect submission, perfect submission. So God's trying to get us to submit. So let's do that this as we go about this week. So please bow with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings today, Lord, for the message that was brought to us this morning. Father God, we pray for our ability to have perfect submission, Lord, to you. As we go out through this week, help us to be a blessing with whoever's path we may cross and make their day a little bit better. And we lift this up to in your son, Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you.